He wasn't some high-powered political prodigy, nor was he an ultra-rich individual singled out by his many enemies. This was a simple man, who used a pen and a paper for a living, to draw things he cared about, to observe, analyze, and represent the actions and inactions of those in power, to reflect on the suffering of those who were suppressed and speak on their behalf as they simply had no voice. And for this reason, Naji Ali had to be silenced. Naji Ali was assassinated in cold blood on the 22nd of July, 1987. 48 years earlier, Naji was born in the small town of Shajara in Palestine. And at the young age of 10, he would become a refugee and part of the mass expulsion of Palestinians from their homeland. And over the next 10 years, he would live from one refugee camp to another, without a home to return to, and without a nation to belong to. Having experienced hardships of living a refugee life, a youthful Naji would find his purpose within the field of the arts, and in turn, a path for his future livelihood. Naji found meaning in producing political cartoons about the plight of the Palestinian people, and posting them around his home, the Ain al-Hilwa refugee camp. Three years later, Naji would start a new life in Kuwait as a cartoonist for a nationalist newspaper, and each year, his caricatures would resonate with more and more people around the Middle East, who were passionate about the Palestinian cause, as well as the state of the Arab world at the time. The rest is history. To better understand Naji's caricature and expression, let me present to you the consistent cast of characters that echo the various real players within his narratives. First and foremost is Hanzala, who in all practical terms is the alter ego of Naji al-Ali. It's as if on the day of the Nakba, Naji himself split into two. Naji the real human, who took on the status of a refugee and who continued on with his path to maturity and life, while on the other hand, Hanzala, the ten-year-old boy who would always be frozen at this young age shocked into a state of limbo, lost yet resolute, and who would only recommence life upon the return to his Palestinian homeland. In Naji's caricatures, Handala is ever-present, a signature, a reminder of the catastrophe that had befallen the Palestinian people, a child to sympathize with, regardless of his name alluding to bitterness, or his look that was filthy and decrepit. Handala the child represented the state of all Palestinian refugee children. Handala was both an observer and a witness Although not growing age-wise, his presence and perspective progressed from one of a Palestinian child's consciousness and conscience to one of an Arab national and finally into one of humanity. The character of Fatma equates to that of the mother and the motherland, Palestine. A beautiful yet somber woman who is dressed in Palestinian national dress and who bears around her neck the key to her lost home. Fatma is both the protector of the Palestinians and represents the struggle for the return to their homeland. Her roots to Palestine are so powerful that in some imagery, they become a literal embodiment of that yearning. The common man, or Zelema, in Palestinian slang, is the ordinary, honest, and good Arab man. Extremely slender in his look due to malnourishment and oppression, he yet stands tall with humility and pride. He's a fighter, a Palestinian, an Arab, and even a universal common man. The evil man character is a revolting and disgusting being. He is the Arab leader, an oppressor with no legs, literally signifying no legs to stand on. His mission is to betray or plot against the Palestinian cause, and all causes that are righteous and just. He is a tool of the West and Israel, and personally benefits greatly from his treachery. The final common character is the Israeli soldier, a small human being in stature and in size, ignorant and aloof to what is going on around him, but nonetheless commits acts of aggression treachery and inhumanity without any care. The themes of Naji's caricature started with the Palestinian catastrophe, logically as this was the subject closest to his heart. He lived it from the age of 10. His representations deeply echoed the strife and difficult lives that Palestinians experienced at the hands of Israelis and Arabs alike. Even though he had not lived in Palestine for over a decade since his start with caricature and political commentary, he had an innate understanding of the oppressed Palestinian sentiment and state of mind. And as Naji matured, so did his topics. Naji's works became bigger than strictly Palestine. Naji as a human being, Arab and observer of the world, had more to say. And subjects like human rights, the American hunger for oil, Arab collusion with the West, 
the peace process and resistance intrigued his artistic and political expression. In 1985, Naji became a global phenomenon. Working for Al-Qabas, a Kuwaiti newspaper with international distribution, his works were republished in many global print forums, but his most powerful impact was not around the world, but back in Palestine, in Gaza, and in the West Bank, in the various refugee camps strewn across the Arab world. Naji's works resonated most with the victims he was speaking of. They were the ones who would paste copies of his caricatures across the walls of buildings and homes. They were the artists who embodied his work and graffiti all across Palestine. He and his other self, Handala, were the icons for the resistance, for the struggle, and for the dream. No one knows who assassinated Naji al-Ali. Some say it was the Israelis. Others say it was Yasser Arafat. No one has claimed this violent act, and no one has denied it. Anyone could have killed Naji, including Arab regimes whom he was critical of. But Naji knew this. Naji knew that he was hated by many players in the Middle East. Some of his works even self-prophesized his demise, his death at the hands of those who he criticized. And this is where Naji to me is a hero, an Arab role model in a modern world scarce of heroism. Someone like Naji who held high the truth, justice and accountability over everything else. His actions led to his end. He was accountable, but he conducted himself in life the same way he demanded of others and how they would act in the fight of good over evil, justice over injustice. Rest in peace, Naji. Your message, power, and legacy last well beyond your time. And Hamdala, we await impatiently the day when you will turn 11 and we can celebrate your birthday as well as the return to your beautiful village of Ashajarat.